Okay, so in this video we're going to have a, a quick tour of the blue board and so that you know uh, what it looks like and how to use it and how to be aware of some of its, uh, some of its features and resources. So here's the development kit that we will be using for, the, uh, for our course, my controller applications. Okay? Starting with about lab 4 onwards, you will actually be using hardware to run and test and demonstrate your programs on an actual hardware platform. Okay, so this is the AT90 USB 1286 trainer, which is also called the Stembot. Uh, you will see some documentation uh, for reasons I can explain later if you ask. Uh, but we will just call them the blue boards because the uh, electronics are mounted on an actual metal frame that is blue. Okay, the boards, uh, my board here is actually because I bought my own, comes in a uh, nice little uh, binder I can zip up and close and carry it with me. But uh, yours won't be attached like this, it'll just be the blue board by itself and nothing else that we will provide to you in lab when you come in the lab. Um, so let's just kind of take a closer look. So the, the board uh, basically has USB connectivity, a USB cable that you connect to the computer. Everybody, everyone's familiar with that. And the power comes from the USB. In here we see this little mini uh, uh, PCB card that contains the actual microcontrollers. So if I flip it over here and then we uh, come in closer, we see that that little guy right there, if we can get it into focus, that little square chip is the uh, the microcontroller itself, the AT90 USB 1286. So when you run code and you upload your program, it's actually being flashed into the uh, this particular device's uh, internal memory. Okay, so there's that. Then let's see what else. To the right here, we have the on-off switch. Okay, whenever you upload a new program and you want to run it, you don't hit the reset button. Instead, we always just turn it off and turn it on back again to make sure that we always start from a fresh state. And then the microcontroller is completely reset and initialized. Okay, we want, just want to make sure of that. And then after that, we have these important buttons. We have a bootloader button and a reset button. And you need these to put the board in bootloader mode. When you turn the board on, and the board is on, and we can see that the 5 volt LED and the 2.3 volt LED indicators are on, okay, the program will immediately run, period. Every time you turn it off and you turn it back on, the program is going to immediately run. But when we upload software, your code, onto the microcontroller, we need to put the board in bootloader mode so that the computer can see it by way of the USB cable. Otherwise the computer doesn't see it. It's connected but it doesn't see it. To put the, the board in bootloader mode we basically have to push bootloader with your thumb. You have to hold the bootloader button first and then push reset while holding the bootloader button and then let go in reverse order. So we do bootloader reset reset bootloader. Okay. At that point the computer will see that the uh, when you look at the, the control panel, the device drivers menu, you will see that the board is detected, and that is actually shown in a separate video. But this is basically how you do it. Again, bootloader reset, reset bootloader, kind of like Control C. Okay, don't do it in reverse order. Um, so that's that. Then on the top we have a series of headers. So the header that you want to be aware of, this one right here, which is called J3. Sometimes the documentation will say, look at pin 5J3. Well, that means there's pin 5, and this is header J3, and here's pin 5. And these are all the same. There's just two pins for every pin number. So it doesn't matter which one. So you have two, two holes to connect 5, two holes to connect 7, etc., etc. Okay, here, this one is very important, J7. This is where you get power from the board that you use to power any electronic circuit devices that we construct here on the breadboarding area because this breadboard does not have its own power. Even though these holes here, this row of holes has this blue line here and this row of, row of holes has the red line over here, it gives the impression that these are powered, but novice students, they put their circuits and then they hook wires from their circuits onto these two rows thinking that they're going to get power, but there's no power, right? This is just a visual indicator and nothing more. If you want power, 
here and here, you have to hook up a wire from here into either the 5 bolt header. This column here is all 5 bolts, or if you need 3.3 bolts, we need to use the rightmost column here on this side. The middle column is all ground which is kind of hard to see but you could, you could tell that it's pointing the ground ledge and indicator points to the middle so this side is 3.3 this side is 5 volts middle of ground so what you would do is you would hook up a wire from ground to maybe the negative here and then probably from 3.3 or 5 volts onto here okay and then from here you would hook up a wire onto the rest of the breadboard to power the rest of the circuit all right if you need 3.3 volts and 5 volts maybe you could put one wire onto the red over here and five bolts another wire maybe onto the bottom row over here it's up to you how do you do it just please keep in mind that this is not connected to anything you need to actually hook up a wire to the power source header alright moving down we do not really use these headers over here so you can ignore them here we have a header that gives us a, a clock source a digital clock this is header J6 Notice that next to each header, there's an indicator of the frequency of that source. So way at the bottom, we have 1.953 hertz. That means that there's a clock approximately uh, 2 hertz. Here, a clock approximately 4 hertz, approximately 8 hertz, approximately 16 hertz or so. So when you need a clock source, and there's a lab that we will need a clock source to 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 uh, f to power the to provide a clock source for the rest of our electronics, we get it from this. We can just plug it onto this side, okay? It's on this side, not this side, not the middle, but on this side, leftmost row. Okay, so moving on to this, we have these switches, S2, S1. These are standalone switches. I think they're attached to a Schmidt trigger. Uh, this is not connected to anything. If you want access to these switches, you can actually hook up a wire onto these two headers. So if you look closely, we see SW1, SW2, that gives you access to this push button and this push button. I've been using the word switches, but I mean push button. Um, so you hook up a wire from here, put it on your electronics, and then when you push here, you get access to the button. I think these are active low, so when you push down, you'll get an active low signal. you get a zero volt. Okay, moving down here further, we get the LCD display, which is uninitialized, so that's why we see this block of squares here. It's actually a two-row display, but you need to know when you have not initialized your display with your code. There will be a lab that we will actually talk to this guy and display characters in here, and if you see this, that means you have not successfully initialized your display, so there's something wrong with your code. To the left here, we have a bar graph LED. Each one of these LEDs can be independently uh, turned on. Uh, you can't see it. Let me put my hand in there. This bottom LED is always on. That's just an on indicator. The LED after that is always off. It's not used. And then the remaining eight LEDs are accessible by program code. And I think these are tied to port C. So every I.O. port bit on port C is attached to each one of these LEDs. So you could write all eight, eight bits and you control whether these turn on and off. Okay. Um, then we have here the dip switches. These switches you will use to provide input to your code. Now usually these should always be in the off position. If we look closer Okay, notice that these are all in the off position. There is an on indicator that means that if I move this in this direction, then we have to switch in the on position. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell because of the light, right? So always make sure that when you start your programs from on to off, I mean off to on, uh, you start with these in the off position. Okay, so these are tied to port E. So that means that when you read data from port E, E, you can find now which of these switches are toggled on or off. Okay, you need to make sure to remember that these switches are active low. What does that mean? That means that when the switch is in the on position, on position means physical on position, that if you read the bit value, it will be a zero instead of a one. It will be inverted logic. Okay, so right now, because I have all the switches in the off position, that means that I'm going to read all ones. That's what active low means. It turns out that the bar graph LED is also active low. 
if you write a value 0 it will turn the LED on if you write a value 1 it will turn the LED off okay right here we have two seven segment displays once again each of these little segments is connected to one bit on port A I believe right including the dot so you have any 8-bit pattern will present turn these LEDs on or off some of those bit patterns actually form numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, etc, etc but you have to give it the right pattern to show it there's another bit on a different port and I can't remember what that one is it's on the documentation that selects whether you want to turn this one on or this one on unfortunately we cannot write to both displays simultaneously at the same time so what we do is that we write to this then we toggle a bit to write to this and then we toggle a bit to write back and if we do this really fast we give you the illusion that these two are being turned on simultaneously okay you're gonna learn about that in later labs these two switches which are very different from these two switches these two switches are not connected button push buttons these two push buttons are not connected to anything if you want access to these buttons you have to use this header and hook wires in here but these two buttons are actually hardwired to these first two dip switches so another reason why you always want to want to make sure these are in the off position is that if you have these two in the on position like that let me angle it like that then this is going to overwrite these push buttons so there will be labs that you will need these push buttons and you'll notice that nothing happens even though you're certain your code is correct well have you made sure that these are in the off position because if they're not they're going to overwrite this so make sure these are in the off position and by the way since these two overwrite these that means that these two are connected to the same port port E okay also I want you to be aware of the orientation of the numbers this is 1 and this is 8 that means that this is the least significant switch or least significant bit and this is the most significant bit when you're looking at it this way right the, when, the least significant switch is on the far left and the most significant is on the far right when we when we talk about registers and you look at program code and we write the number of you know the, the bits of an 8-bit value we normally write the most significant bit on the left and the least significant on the right okay so be mindful that if you have a certain bit pattern here in the manner that you're looking at this physically when you actually store it on a register the value will be in the reverse order because the most significant bit on a register like on a debugging window it will always be on the on the left side not the right side right to make matters worse I believe if I remember correctly that the uh, orientation for the LEDs when you're looking at it in this way that the most significant LED is here and the least significant LED is here so if you write a program that reads all 8 bits from here and you output it directly to port C so that you can see what switches are on and off it will be the reverse pattern so I need you to please remember that you will need to account for that in your code okay and uh, that's pretty much it with regards to to uh, a quick tour of the uh, blue board so um, again the most important thing is that when you upload a program before you use the flip utility we need to put this in bootloader mode so again bootloader reset reset bootloader then if you check the control panel it should be able to detect the the, the blue board in the device drivers as shown in a previous video after that you use the flip utility to upload your code and once you're ready to run it turn this off and on and see if your code works okay do not just push reset and leave the board on we just want to make sure that that microcontroller is completely starting from a fresh state okay that's all there is to it uh, when you put the boards away I ask that you please disconnect this wire and roll up the USB cable when you put it back into our drawers all right that's pretty much it thank you